Welcome to the Sent and Bent podcast. Today we're going to talk about our creative processes because we're all very creative, but we're all extremely different in our approach to making things. It's ridiculous. Steven can sit in front of a computer for six hours, make the perfect photoshopped eagle like you wouldn't believe. Will can just like come up with anything right off the bat, just like most spontaneous do, humor. Bald yeah. sloths. Like, yeah, do a voiceover for this commercial. Bald sloth hunting just comes out of <laughs> nowhere. <laughs> In like three minutes. It's not like you take all this time and like write stuff down. <laughs> it's like, have you seen those interviews of Little Wayne? Yeah, okay, those are we'll, premium. We'll get to it. And then... Ethan can have like a functioning complicated device in his brain and like sit you down and like talk you through it with words <laughs> that makes <laughs> sense for how it's going to work. Like on the last podcast, we talked about the snow tracking, the six by six limo. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you just explained it, it already exists in your head somehow. And then me is like, everything is visual and it's super hard for me to explain my thoughts with words. Mm. So I think that would be an awesome podcast we got yeah. going on. Plus, Stephen has a, talk about. a surprise for me. It's not really a surprise, Again, but I have a story the, for it's, it's a funny yeah. story. I'm actually Again. interested because I don't really know what it oh. is either. But. You'll remember and when I think, too, it. like, just if you guys are saving a story for me for the podcast, I know it's going to be a banger. So Oh, we just yeah. want to see your reaction on camera. You might be disappointed. I mean, you will be disappointed, but it, that'll oh. be entertaining. Okay. What's going on, man? Oh, we're just starting right out the gate with that? Yeah. Might all as right. well. He wants yeah. to know. I want so, to know. Edwin recently met my girlfriend, and we were all out for dinner. We do that once in a while. And so we have oh. this big crew there, and you had the rental Tesla. Yeah, the loner. Well, you're like, look at this little car, and you had the key fob. She thought it was a real car, and she like later told me, she's like, that's so on brand for what I've heard about Edwin. He would carry a little car around with him. And then I was so upset when I found out it's just his key. But the thing I really wanted to tell you is, you know how like the whole night you kept talking about the Tesla dance? The Tesla Model X can dance. If it you haven't dance. seen it, look it up on YouTube. It's the coolest thing. She, she thought you were going to do a dance, like that you made up a about Tesla dance. Tesla. <laughs> and she told me later, cause like, she kind of like rushed me out of there and she didn't really want to say she wanted to go home, but it was kind of going to be a date night. And then I she's out with vibe. all the guys, you know, I was about to become a third wheel. Yeah. Showing her the <laughs> Tesla dance. Yeah. I think your wife also wanted to go home. And went, <laughs> yeah. But she told she, me like, later. She put her jacket on and like stood up and we were all talking about like Humvees and she was like ready to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she told me later, she's like, once I found out it was the car that danced, I couldn't have cared less. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> she wanted to see it when she thought you were going to be dancing the Tesla dance. So it was my first time meeting her, and I let her down double. I don't carry around little cars, and I don't make up my own dance. You should start doing both of those things. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Next time I see her, I'll be like, this is my favorite Hot Wheels uh, Gen 1 Corolla. And she'll be like, wow, my <laughs> mental image of this man is complete. Wow. Uh, well, just tell her to see me around the Chang Lee and she'll really see oh, yeah. my personality. She, hasn't, she doesn't know just, much about the Chang Lee. Oh. Edwin, you just need to invent a Chang Lee dance. Uh-huh. And, um... Then, then you oh. impress her. Oh, and then it tell her that, and she'll think the car is just gonna like go up and down and stuff. But actually, you'll be there like, gee, gee. well, when it does wheelies, and we are talking about. If Have it we has, had a podcast where you didn't talk about the Chang Lee doing wheelies? It's yet? gonna be pretty since you got cool. The Chang Lee? Have we Not talked? ever since we had the Chang uh, Lee. I don't think so. No. The lure of the Chang Lee, the lore, the lore of the, the lore. Chang Lee is super funny. Will and I were talking about this the other day. We got this car imported and delivered and it sat on top of the hill for three months and none of us even thought about it no interest i was like the, the only zero excitement interest. was chris kept borrowing it chris was helping build the shop yeah. and he's six foot six <laughs> yeah. and he kept borrowing it to go home for lunch because he lives just yeah. up the road chris was driving the chang lee more than we were because yeah. his like uh he probably drove it a hundred miles Overall, uh, no, dang near. But his 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 family up there thought it was hilarious. So and it, like his, uh, I don't know what the relation is, nephew or something was, um, was like a couple years old and just loved the little 
the little red car. So I mean, how could he, you but he not? was the point is he was the only one that like actually cared about it. Yeah. I drove it down to the mailbox when we first got it just to see if it worked. And I was like, wow, this thing is very jank. And then I didn't care about driving it anymore. And then you guys uh, somehow didn't get interested at all. Yeah. And then no. <laughs> the deal was so uh the importer of these things, I believe the only one in the US is electric import motors. So they gave it to us and all they said was just tag us on Instagram. So we were like, okay, yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll do something with it. Eventually we're pretty busy this summer. And then they sent us a message like, Hey, did you get around to doing that? And I was like, Oh, like, let's just do a rally track time. So the first thing we did was Will and I a just rally hopped track. in. We got Steven filming. We're like, let's just hit a rally track, throw it up on Instagram. We had so much fun that day and it progressed so quickly. We made an <laughs> entire grind hard feature video, which we never make full videos without like modifying something or getting it working. I we mean, did a you whole, modified it. We yeah, had to put bigger tires. We roof burnt the rack. roof a little burnt bit. Burnt a hole in the roof. Well, I mean. no, that wasn't until the 100 mile challenge oh, video. Oh, yeah, well, but yeah. that wasn't the, the feature. You were talking about yeah. the feature video. That's why I thought yeah, you were. The yeah. first video, all we did was put those tires on it, which was a little bit of grinding out the fenders. Yeah. And it was yeah. a little, I think There's actually the welded diff was in the first episode. Yeah. But still, I, I was so. not expecting getting a full episode out of that. But the second, like, we launched from the start line. We were like, Launch. oh, like we, we could, well, it's electric. So it doesn't even make much noise. You just hear it kind of like janking around over the bumps. Just <laughs> and then you two going, whoa, we, <laughs> Literally? Steven, we were on this side of the shop. You guys were on the other side of the shop, halfway across the property. And we just hear, whoa, we were out distance. all day. Yeah. And all day. Steven just driving stopped thing filming around. us. Like just kept yeah, driving around. You guys around. are still out yeah. there, like whoa, whoa, <laughs> man, yo. <laughs> yeah, Stephen came in because you were doing like uh, work. probably chopper. You stuff, were doing yeah. work, and like <laughs> that was important for Stephen to film. Like we couldn't possibly have gotten more footage of us trundling through the woods in that thing at one mile an hour. And then like a couple hours in, we came in and we're like, Stephen, we're about to try the yeeter totter, man. And like. <laughs> We didn't stop until that thing was completely dead on battery. Yep. What's like, really funny is I was looking through the footage on the, the phone footage we uh -huh. have of it, trying to find any clips where you guys weren't just being like, whoa, and that is all the audio I had. <laughs> Every single clip. I was He was editing that footage like while I was working on the chopper, and I just hear, Whoa, whoa, over and over, and over yeah. again. Was normally when we start a project, it's our idea. So when we bought all the axles and hubs for the shopping cart go-kart. It's like, yeah, Will and I wouldn't shut up about it, but it was our idea to do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The Chang Lee just came just into like, our lives. Hey, do you want this thing? We're like, sure. But yep. the second we stepped foot in that thing, man. That was its right, purest form. What were we form. talking about? I went off on another I think Chang, it was, yeah. I, every, classic Chang Lee rant. We can't even say the word <laughs> Chang Lee oh. or it starts. We're talking about it's the creative It's because it's in the background right I know. There. We got to like. We need to like put a tarp on it or something. It's looking like, at us. My cheeks hurt from smiling so much just looking at it. But <laughs> anyways, you know what my dream is? I want to get one of those Harbor Freight motorcycle racks and then Supermoto a brand new CRF 110. Have you seen like the new way they do the plastic? I haven't, no, but I'm sure really they're pretty nice. Cool. Supermoto it with red wheels behind that thing mm. on a little trailer. Or you like can I almost mount. cried. I have goosebumps, man. <laughs> <laughs> he actually <laughs> does. Oh, no. Maybe that's because it's cold. Uh, um, it is kind of cold. I wouldn't have them before I started talking about the Chang Lee, oh, but man. anyways, if it has an electric motor, all we need to do is electric steering and we can make it remote control. It would be pretty nice yep. because then we could put you in it, Steven, and like play yeah. the 100 mile challenge, yeah. but we don't have to do the work. We can just drive you around for 100 oh, miles. I don't know if so. I want to agree to this. I've and seen we'll you put, guys drive. <laughs> we'll put DJI like uh, the same thing that's in our Tamron, drone FPV. on it, and then we'll just wear goggles and we'll drive Steven. It'll be a third party 100 mile challenge. Yeah. Third, third person. Yeah. Yep. yeah, that's kind of the idea. We'll just put you in the most jank situations so and there's nothing you can do. <laughs> We're on that's another Changley tangent. We're still supposed to be talking about <laughs> okay. the creative process. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. So Which I was apparently thinking, the creative process is just yeah. Changley. So I was thinking each of us could talk about like what we think our creative process is and then we can like talk about each other's because yeah. I think like I've seen things in you guys 
that maybe you won't describe when you start. So right, it's let's just hit it. Uh, I guess let's just start with Will because maybe that's like the most unicorn uh. of a creative process <laughs> I've ever seen in my entire life. Hmm. It's hard to explain my creative process because it's very sporadic, you know, it's all yeah. over the place. But um, I think my creative process is just being able to come up with things on a fly and kind of like half create them, you know? Like I can create like a pretty good functioning picture of what I want to make, but it's not always the best, you know? Ethan can describe a project, but I can kind of like in a really good way but I think I can make a prototype that doesn't really work very well. But, you know. Um, well, like the <clears throat> the the 1,000cc ruckus. Mm. Like, it wasn't like a discussion where we were like, oh, we should put a 1,000cc in a scooter. It was like you just showed up one day and you were like, this is what I want to do. Yep. Like, where did that come from? Yeah, like not necessarily building things specifically, just like the creativity of your mind in any, in any, yeah. or like, how do you come up with bald sloths? You know, we're not talking just about building stuff. How here. do I come up with bald sloths? Yeah, yeah as mm. an example, or like any of the yeah. other funny stuff that you do and say that's yeah. like, it that's comes, all It comes too. from like a deep internal part of me that I don't really understand yet. You know, <laughs> it's like, I'm still young and I don't understand that part of me yet. But um, yeah, just, I don't know. I, my creative process is very weird and very hard to explain, but I have a lot of different personalities and I can, um, you can channel them. They get channeled depending on who yeah. I'm hanging out with. I'm mm. sure you've noticed. Oh, like yeah, if I'm hanging out with Edwin. <laughs> yeah. Then our, it ramps up. We feed off of each other's energy, but I guess what I was more talking about is like, for an example, just the other day we needed to do this ad spot for on X off road, Mm -hmm. which is awesome because we all love it and we all use it. And it's just great. Even just for private property and knowing where it is and And snowmobiles, which is my favorite hobby. (laughs) (laughs) So we did actually go snowmobiling. Yeah, Yeah. it was pretty fun. We don't only use on X off road to find off road trails when we're about to go on a trip or even find awesome trails in our area that we had no idea about, but we also use it to find snowmobile trails. Right now I'm on a weird tracked device and you better believe we're going to find a trail to use this thing on Onyx Off-Road. They're the very first sponsor of this podcast. We are thrilled about it. Definitely check it out. The link is in the description and go enjoy having offline maps wherever you find your adventure. So the first Onyx ad we did, I was like, all right, fake Chevy commercial. Will driving around the Mini Cooper in a flannel. And then I said, we didn't say anything really. We filmed the entire thing B-roll. And then we knew that we were going to have Will do a voiceover. And Steven and I just assumed it would be funny. We didn't realize the extent of the situation because we just left you up there with the microphone. Yeah, you got to leave me. And that's what like, that's where the real creative process comes. Like I can just channel like a different character. Yeah, you made a whole voice with an accent that we never heard before. Yeah. And they don't like, I can't replicate it either. Like you were like asking me to make the same voice yeah, and for the, for the second, second commercial, I had to make a different voice that I was replicating off of some uh. janky TV show I saw. But So you just really don't know where it comes from. I don't know where, where it, it comes from. Like. It just, it my creative process is me. Yeah. I'm that's, me. That's why I was talking about little Wayne in the beginning he famously doesn't write down any of his lyrics. Mm. He just hears the beat, comes up with them as spot, and almost every single one of his songs is a freestyle. And I freestyle things. Exactly. No, I think <laughs> your creative process is that of a freestyle rapper. Log style. It's, Which, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, if you think about it, like you look at people who are famously good at freestyles and the progression of their careers, like Lil Wayne or Eminem, mm-hmm. it's like they start at a point and then as they make more songs and develop more skills it gets better and better and better until you get to a point where you can do like kill shot like that yep you know so it's like for you i think working with ethan for so long on like the how to actually make it work side of things (laughs) and then working with steven and i on like making it work on camera side of things Mm mm-hmm and like it's really molded that into like something that I can actually use because yeah. before it was just like a goofy, you know, thing. 
but now I can channel it and I know how to make things and I know how to present things. Yeah. So, but yeah, yeah cause I guess just as an outsider looking in, it's like you actually have no idea what you're going to do each day. And then it I just really kind of yeah. hits you. <laughs> and sometimes that's Ethan telling you what to do, but also <laughs> yeah. sometimes that's just like with the ruckus, like you had a lot of creative freedom in that. Mm-hmm. Like, you started a lot of the process on your own um, to the point where I think the first thing you really had help with was when Ethan recommended not to do rear suspension to make oh, it easier. Oh, yeah, because that was... Yeah, just yeah. help figure out mm-hmm. where, to, where to put, put the even like and stuff. But. Yeah, like aesthetically what you were going to do and how much you were going to keep of the ruckus. And you had a lot of that figured out on your own. Mm-hmm. But when you knew you wanted to put the 1,000cc in the ruckus, you don't have any idea what it was going to be until like, it yeah, happened. no. Yeah. And I'm not really good at explaining my ideas, but I am pretty good at just slapping them together. Cause yeah. So I've done my whole life. Like I start off with a hot glue gun and it just kind of, <laughs> now I have a welder. <laughs> so hot now you just have a big hot yeah. glue gun for metal. Yeah. 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 Well, well you quit. This is my 30 hour mark guys of being awake. Did you get that at the Pack River store? No, I got it on my way here because I knew I was going to hit the 30-hour mark on this podcast. So, um, Red Bull, if you're watching, I know we've been trying to, like, get other sponsorships, but I'd, I got the 8-ounce. Uh, wow, this has Max and Checo on it. Yep, that's why I got it. How much caffeine is in that? It's very only, small. like, 80 million. Very small. It's actually very small. Yep, the small very responsible only? Yep. For yeah, someone with heart problems. But I haven't had any <laughs> coffee today. If you grab a full-size, like, monster, they're yeah. 300. Yeah. I haven't wow. had any coffee today, but so mm-hmm. 80 crazy. milligrams is actually not that bad. It's less than like a large oh. cup of coffee straight right. to gel. Still, you're going to lose your gel. mustache. <laughs> yeah, right now we're going to, oh we're going to have goodness. two podcasts yeah. in a row of you yeah. losing the mustache of responsibility. Oh. All right. I think we should yeah. do Steven next. And yeah. remember, it's not just like grind hard stuff. Cause I think yeah. you're creative in like all aspects of life. But what do you see as your, like from, concept to finished product like i guess it really depends on what kind of thing because i i got a lot of hobbies outside of grind hard stuff um i'm really into photography lately it's been a lot with like eagles and birds and stuff but i also do music and that i don't know it's kind of hard to describe my creative process with music at all because it's such a different part of my mind like you know how like math and like other types of things or different parts of your brain. Yeah. When I can get fully immersed in music, I'm not thinking logically anymore. It's really hard to describe, but I don't get a sense of time. I don't get a sense of sometimes not even like melodies. Like I'll, I'll play the piano and I'll sit down and come up with like a couple chords I like. And then I just let myself autopilot mm. and I, I turn off all reason, all logical thinking and just see what happens. And I've started doing a lot of recording And so for the last four or five years, I've recorded hundreds of different piano songs. And sometimes I go back through and listen to them and I'm like, whoa, that's weird. And I never could have come up with that from like a logical Mm. standpoint. Like maybe I'm in four, four timing. So it's like one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And then all of a sudden I'm doing like five, eight. I'm like one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two. And I can get it to flow smoothly as long as I'm in that creative space. Mm -hmm. As soon as I think about it too much, I'll lose it, which is why I record almost everything I do. Because I'll come up with those ideas and fine tune them later. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's really hard to describe to people who don't do music. Like Ed, you do music, but like it's really hard for me to describe that to someone like Ethan. Yeah, who you've, also you've described it many times, yeah. and I can't, I can't even comprehend what that's like. I have no frame of reference to know what that. Yeah, it's really odd. You know. Like there's times people like interrupt me while I'm playing, which happens fairly frequently because I'll always be playing around other people or in other environments and stuff and I'll get interrupted and not even really register it as like English words. Mm. I have to like switch. It's really weird. Um, As far as photography goes though, my creative process is probably similar to most photographers. Like I come up with a scene I like or a image that I want to get and then I figure out how to get it. And then like the editing process comes later and I'll kind of fine tune the colors and figure out how I want it to look. Like, how do I want that image to be presented? So that's more of a logical thought process. So it's very because, different. Like, I feel yeah. like I have two completely different creative process. That's music, though. Like, you can't really, it's like an abstract painting. You can't miss paint. But 
editing a photo, you could definitely miss edit. Like you could lose a lot of dynamic range if you do the wrong oh, thing yeah. and lose a lot of sharpness if you do the wrong thing or just make the scene look unrealistic if you change things too much. Like it requires more of an analytical mindset. It kind of does. And often I'll go through that whole process and then like sleep on it for a while. I'll be like, oh, I don't even like it anymore. And then sleep on it for a while. I'll look back at it and be like, oh, wow, that's yeah. actually pretty nice. And sleep on it is underrated. Mm -hmm. especially with music and visual things. Exactly. Not just that though, like <laughs> any, you know, solving problems Anything, with building yeah. stuff too. Like, yeah, it's, uh, yeah. What's that saying? It's like, write drunk, edit sober or whatever. Oh, <laughs> I feel like yeah. that comes into play with a lot yeah, of creative little things. Hemingway action. Yeah. One, one of my favorite sayings about like, uh, photo editing and probably video as well. And, uh, it's my favorite, just it, like it's true, but also just the way people say it is so violent that you have to learn how to kill your babies. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. It's such a terrible way to say it. <laughs> that but is it's so, so true. brutal. Like, especially when you first get into like, cause I was into photography for a long time as well. And like you first get into it and you're just like, you just, you take like 30 pictures of something and you're just like, I love all of them. Mm -hmm. And you have to learn how to Narrow get rid of yeah all of those ones and like only keep the one yeah. that's, you know. A lot of painters say a painting's never done. It's just taken from you. Mm. It's kind of the same thing with music. Like you could spend as much time perfecting every little thing, but at some point you just have to call it and send it out there. Yeah. Otherwise I mean, you'll never finish it. And that's totally the same for everything I do too. I mean, everything I build is physical. So you could say it's done, but in my head it never is. Yeah. Nothing I've ever built is finished because it's not, there's always a few things that, could have been a little bit different that I, uh, you know, or whatever. Or that's what's appealing to me about like building like a time attack car. If we like lived by a track or something, mm. cause then you could always be approving and trying to take time off and like, yeah, I don't know. I've always just liked the idea of any building something for any kind of actual racing because like then, yeah, you can yeah. measure your improvements. Like yeah, our lap times around the track are like fun, but yeah. they're a pretty bad measurement of improvement because like the track conditions is always different and like, oh yeah who's driving and yeah. it's like well, and at some point it's just how much you guys are willing to push yourself yeah exactly right it's too. just yeah. a, it's just a matter of how yeah. hard you're gonna which Both is also true of any on the hill really, if you overshoot going down the hill you pretty much die yep and if you overshoot going up the hill you end up in a bad situation yeah the, yeah and then like is, it's yeah the yep. best is when you can go flat out and if you overcorrect or go too fast you just slide off the track and then get back on right with that a roll is cage like and a harness and a seat and that's like the know. ultimate way to know how good your machine is right but we really can't do that because if you overshoot no. that down corner you could <laughs> yeah totally you just hit die a tree and, or break yeah. something or it'd be <laughs> yeah. very bad for sure <laughs> that's oh, what yeah. concerns me oh yeah is that, that downhill left corner yep well the whole track's a left corner yeah, well, that downhill is <laughs> that gnarly. downhill because you're bumping, like you're jumping, and you can't. Well, and it's just and so it's, steep. Yeah, you can't you can't steep. see where you're going. Yeah, either. It's surrounded by trees, but yeah. Anyway, for sure. Um. Yeah, but just, well, we got sidetracked from Stephen's creativity, but yeah, just like as someone who has known Stephen for I don't know half my life or so, and also like as being like completely the opposite in terms of how my creative process works. It's crazy to just watch Steven improv the piano. Cause he'll just sit down and just play. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like a song that was composed like every mm -hmm. single time. And yeah. I mean, I'm sure it doesn't to Steven, like in his head, there's probably like a million things that are slightly wrong with it or whatever. But like that is just exactly the opposite of how my brain is. If you tell me sit, to sit down and improvise anything, my brain turns off. <laughs> Gone. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing. Well, it just, like there's a lot for you for so many years. There's so many time lapses where you're kind of like doing this with your beard mm -hmm. and just like hours, just like, especially like things like complicated, yep. like the chopper, you're just like, yep. Like, <laughs> not necessarily measuring things, writing things down. Like you can just tell the gear is like, yep churning it out in your head yeah ethan like, has this ability to like visualize a whole thing mechanical components how big it has to be like what yeah. materials to make it out of all of that stuff before you even really like yeah. mm -hmm. start working yeah. on something and then when will's building something it's more like an improvisational piano piece yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> like right. weld yeah. it on uh like with the double go-kart weld the shift linkage bracket upside down without thinking about the clearance yeah, I didn't issues think about that or put at the all. 
gas pedal on the wrong side on the foot when you oh, have okay the 24 hour challenge was a little interesting but. <laughs> no but but, but, the, but the point is like not to say that i mean that was a terrible idea yeah. but that's not the point the point is like in that creative space you didn't think oh the throttle goes on the right foot or think the throttle goes on your hand because you have yeah. a handlebar yeah. that's already built for it. You just thought, I just this is where the it. throttle that's goes. where it goes. It's done. Right there. It's going right here. It's, I'm going to weld these two cables yeah. together end to end. It's going to yeah. work. And it's, I mean, it's kind of did. jazz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's jazz, man. Yeah. I build things like jazz. I like that. Yeah. yeah. Mm. yeah. And you don't even have to hit the right notes. I mean, well, it works a little bit. Sometimes, sometimes you do. Sometimes you do. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm, get, I'm getting better at hitting the right notes, yeah, I think. Yeah, it takes but, practice. Uh, yeah, back to like how Ethan builds things. Like He was able to describe the whole Monster Chopper in a way where I could visualize it before it was even a thing. Yeah, that's like, the thing that cool. is crazy for me because I describe ideas incredibly conceptually. Like if I mm-hmm. pitched you guys like, oh, this is this thing I want to do in the Grind Hard movie, you guys probably all have a different idea of what I said because it's so like conceptual. I actually think I'd be a really bad film director <laughs> because <laughs> it's like it's like this feeling and like I've always felt like the best films are the ones where you don't necessarily remember the story. Like, oh, it was so cool because it was suspenseful the whole time because they were actually asleeping or something. It's like... Oh, Interstellar is like my favorite movie because the way it makes me feel like it right. makes me think like about the universe in a different way. Like it changed the way you feel and that makes the art better. And so like if I'm trying to describe like a little tiny section of a scene, I'm talking about the way that it feels. Which is very hard to describe and get other people to understand mm-hmm. how you yeah. feel about it. That's Unless it's kind of like based on like another piece of content yeah you have to compare it to this moment was amazing we could do a moment similar but different you know yeah but if you're just trying to convey your ideas with the way that it makes you feel in the finished art form i guess i'm a like ethan in that way where i see the finished product in my head straight away like with this movie we want to do i have quite a few scenes like fully edited i know which music i'm going to use Part of them I'm going to make music for, and I've already heard that piece of music. Mm -hmm. But Steven's an incredible musician. If I decided to try to describe to him what I needed it to sound like, I couldn't do that. Right. It's like, and sometimes I do get lost on tangents where I like start something and I like do something by mistake and it works and I run with it. Mm -hmm. But most of the time I have something kind of specific that I'm going for. And if I have too many of those ideas, those are the ones that take me a long time to edit. For right. at least for grind hard video wise, but yep. yeah, I do kind of see the finished product, like which I think it is what you see when you think of things like the monster chopper. Yeah, so it's it's kind of interesting because like listening to you guys describe how I think about things and like and it, you know, yeah, we need is, to hear it from you. Well, yeah, it, no, yeah. It, but what I was saying is it's interesting because it is I do see a finished product and like, yeah, I I build things in my head and I just kind of like reassemble them and rearrange them until I figure out how it works. But the interesting thing is I never know exactly what it's going to look like until I actually build it. Like I visualize all the mechanical like processes and how to make it work and how strong it needs to be and how to make it strong. Like, you know, this, this swing arm, like I had a very good idea of how to make it work, but I didn't really have any idea what it was going to look like exactly Mm. until it was done like it's so it's kind of a combination of those two things like to figure out if it's possible and the overall like the overall image of what this chopper was i had a very good idea of what i wanted it to be but that's an overall kind of more like you were talking about a feeling how it makes you feel like rather than every detail like i didn't have every detail of what each part of the swing arm was going to look like or um you know exact scales of everything i just knew that I wanted it to be, you know, very asymmetrical. So like one side has all the mechanical parts on it and the other side, you just see the wheels. And like the, the idea being, of course, that the whole chopper is, but the tires are so big, it's, you know, lower than anyway. I don't, so you not see all more the details, the but functional pieces first. Yeah. Because that's what Matt, like, and, and, um, in terms of the way, like I was saying, I'm really bad at improv. Like, mm-hmm if I just had to sit down and draw a cool chopper because it's cool without having to worry about how it works, I wouldn't know where to start. 
But if I have a conceptual, like if I have a problem to solve mechanically, I start with that and then work outward. So it's like, okay, what does it have to be to work? And then how can I make it look good within that framework? Cause like, I want everything I build to look awesome, but it, it's, it's kind of like, it has to work first and then I figure out how to make it, what it, what it needs mm. to look like kind of thing. Um, oh yeah. If so that you makes you sense, get your but. parameters and then you figure out how you can express yourself artfully within right, those parameters. Right. But yeah. the, the art part doesn't come until it's happening. The, the other, the, like the conceptual creative process, like of <clears throat> designing it where I'm like, you know, explaining it to you guys like, Oh, it's going to be like this and like this. I have an overall idea of like, Oh, it'd look really cool if, there was, you know, a chopper with these tires or, you know, a power wheels with this body. And then, mm. you know, something like a power wheels is easy. You're you know, visually because it's, it's already, you know, a shape that you're starting with, but like, but yeah, then the details of what each part's going to look, look like comes later. But I mean, each, as I design each part, that same process kind of happens of like assembling it in my head and kind of rearranging it and, and, you know, figuring out what it's going to do. But yeah, it is funny though, because the, the improv thing, it's just incredibly terrible at it. Like any Did you game, ever do improv class or no. like well, theater? When I was in school, um, uh, the, the school that I went to was the Waldorf school, um, private school in, in town. And, and my mom was a teacher there. That's how I was able to, <laughs> my parents were able to afford me going there is because my mom was a teacher. But anyway, we did like plays and stuff. So we did, we did theater and, and whatnot there. Um, but it wasn't improv. But no, it wasn't improv. It was scripted. And like, I could, I memorized everybody's lines by like the third run through of the play, but, oh. <laughs> but like, but that's, that's like, yeah, it's not improv. It's just like, so like that's, it's creativity, but not, whereas like anytime, like specifically there's this game called Balderdash. I don't know if any of you've ever played it, but, mm -mm. um, it's a word game and you, um, you pull out a card and the card has a word on it. That's an incredibly obscure word. It's a real word. And then everybody in the game has to make up a definition. Oh, I've for that played word. that game. Yeah. And yeah. then, but then the person judging it, um, or not judging the person whose turn it is to be the, I don't know, whatever you call it. They know what the real definition is, oh. um, but everybody else doesn't. <clears throat> and so you get points for guessing the real definition when it's turned to guess. Cause then you read everybody's definition out loud. And then you get points for, um, other people guessing your definition as the real one. Mm. I could never play. Like I was just completely terrible at that game. The only way I could ever come up with anything is to just hear the word and think of like, take apart the word into syllables and think of what those syllables sounded like. And then just write a description based on that, which is the worst way to play that. Because huh. then everybody, everybody <laughs> yeah. knows they know that, exactly. yeah. because they can hear it in they the, like hear they hear it. the word and they're like, Oh, it's obviously that that's the yeah. only way I could ever play that game. Cause improv just, <laughs> straight out the window. <laughs> Give me a blank piece of paper and say, do art. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> like I can draw things, but I can draw things that are in front of me. Yeah. Like, Give me a parameter. Give yeah. me a spec racing with rules and I'll find the loop. Right. Give or, me yeah. a power wheels body that needs to fit this engine. And right. Like, yeah. Give me a problem to solve. <laughs> like, like putting tracks on the limo. Like we talked about in the last podcast. Like, yeah. and the, the thing that sometimes surprises me about it is like some problems like the chopper I have to sit there and think half a day or whatever to solve the problem but other things like that limo thing like that solution was in like basically instantaneous like somebody was like talking to me about the limo and they're like oh put the limo on tracks and I was like oh this is how you do it like sometimes the, like I've yeah. just been doing it so long now that sometimes I don't there doesn't even seem to be time between the problem arising and being solved in my head. I'm just like, Oh, there it is. And you think so logically, you don't have all this fluff slowing you down. I think a hundred, <laughs> I think the exact opposite of everything you just said, yeah. I'm a hundred percent fluff and I can't get to the point. <laughs> <laughs> like if you asked me to figure out how to make the limo on tracks, I'd first think of like how it would look and all this ridiculous stuff mm -hmm. that would never work. And I, would have a really hard time ruling out certain ideas that look really cool because they won't work. Right. And then like, I come with to you with things all the time and you're like, that's impossible. I'm like, Oh, <laughs> yeah, right. yeah. nice. Well, but I mean, I'm like, you we know, could probably do this in two days. You're like more like three months. And I'm like, Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, make me edit the videos and like I've edited videos, mm -hmm. but like I can put it together in a logical order and even make it, you know, halfway decent. But like the music part, like that's what, I mean, it's one of the many things that, that makes our videos what they are is like 
how it all fits with the music. And that's something I've never mm. understood or been able to do. Like anytime I've edited a video, I've just been like, what's a cool song that I like? Mm-hmm. Pick that song, edit the music to that song. It doesn't yeah. have anything to do with what the video is or how it fits. Like, and that's, yeah. you know, that's the difference in how our brains work. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, I think that's one of the most important things for YouTube specifically because YouTube is so competitive. Like anyone can make a video about anything for like right. pretty easily and upload it and have the exact same chances in the algorithm as anyone else. But it's like the, the music selection is rough out there. And there's so many yeah. options to get quality music, but it's like, if you're, I guess it'd be harder if you were like, Oh, I like what a person like, Oh, I like everything. It's like, that would be really hard to edit a good video if you had that mindset. Right. Cause then the bad music wouldn't bother you. Yeah. Like we just went to the, this music, the video festival in town this weekend. And I like, was repulsed <laughs> by some, the, oh, some no. of the music choices, the, qual- the music, the editing, oh. the sound effects, the transitions. I was like in all of them or just some every of, really? single one. Oh, Usually no. they're pretty good. Normally they're really good. Huh. I don't know what happened. It's like this, the way that Netflix edits things is taking oh, over. It's everybody's everything. just copying Netflix. It's, let's oh. make it as long and boring as possible. And then throw a hook right at the end to make you watch the next one. Like, I hate huh? those it's edits. It's terrible. It makes me sick. It's Ugh. so bad. And I really think that, because Netflix is doing it for capitalism reasons. Yeah, I mean, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, it's so counterintuitive to like good art. I guess that's my opinion, but right. you know, it's well, like- Well, I mean, counter capitalism and art are generally mutually exclusive. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> the more exactly. capitalism you have, the worse your art is, so. Yeah, exactly. It's like the most, the more government interference, the worse your government is. <laughs> it's yeah, like right. the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It's like, I don't know, but yeah, music, it's- And I'm sure that there were plenty of people in the same exact theater as I that had a great time and thought each film was incredible. (laughs) But it's like, I don't, I don't know. Music is definitely hit or miss. Like you can have an overexposed footage, shaky footage. You you tell your story really well. Yeah. And a lot of really successful YouTube channels just don't have any music at all. And honestly, great option. Right, because then you don't <laughs> you're not anyone ruining with your the music. story. Yeah, yeah. and I mean half of our comments on any given video, man, not half, yeah. but there's comments on every single video we've ever complaining. posted, complaining and praising the music in the same video. Yeah. Every time yeah. there's someone who hates the music yeah. and someone who loves it, and that's yeah. just that's the way, the it, way is. it is. You're never gonna make everyone yeah. any everyone happy, but especially when it comes to music, that's that's a hard one. So, yeah. like my general rule is just like play the music that's conveying the feeling that you want right and then transition it too. like don't have all hype a whole video right. it's yeah. not mm-hmm. gonna work and i think a lot of channels make that mistake because they're thinking like mr beast retention you know all this stuff but it's like with what we do we have some moments that are just sitting around trying to figure out really hard <laughs> stuff right. and you need to play a song that conveys that emotion yep otherwise it's just weird it's like this happy song and everyone and doesn't go yeah, right the video at all sitting there looking at the monster chopper for an entire time lapse and, and it's just, just dubstep like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're like what is this but yeah no i'm definitely uh improvisational in like the way that i get to the end result but the end result is pretty much there the entire time right like to like, especially if I'm here while while we're filming the videos, if I right. filmed some of it and I saw what Steven filmed, so I already knew like what kind of footage I have to work with. Like I know where I'm going to inject the drone shots. I know where I'm going to change the music. Like I know where I'm going to try to emphasize a joke that Will made. Right. Like I just know it before it happens. And then the way that it happens is just sitting there for a really long time. Yep. <laughs> and that's it. Yep. Like, it's not like a, like a struggle. It's not hard. Uh, it's just kind of, it's already there. If anything, it's just frustrating how long it takes because it's already there. Yeah. I have that that's problem why. too. Like building stuff all the time. I'm like, 
I, I can build it in my head in seconds, but yeah. then it takes days, weeks, or months to actually make it a physical uh, thing. And it's like, yeah. oh. it's so <laughs> frustrating. It's like in my backpack right now, I always have three or four notebooks and they're just chock full of ideas. Like probably a solid half are for grind hard. And then the other half are just like really weird stuff that I think about, <laughs> but it's like, the my favorite thing to do is like in the morning on a weekend I don't have anything to do like this weekend I was like sit around drink some caffeine and just think just think about like weird stuff and I love doing that it, on on road trips <laughs> like mm. when I because like yeah talking through stuff or not even talking like by myself like like mm. like solo road trips where yeah because like I I've always drank caffeine on road trips because to nice. stave off headaches and stay awake. But like, I mean, I drink caffeine every day, but like even before I did that, like I had, you know, so there's just something about it because you're not distracted with like doing things. You're just driving and, you know, basically on autopilot. Yeah. And so then you just, just think and think and like just build yeah. stuff in your head. Like I've yeah done a lot of, built a lot of really cool or designed a lot of really cool things in my head on road trips. It's a yeah. good time for just sitting and thinking with some caffeine. <laughs> I think it speaks to just, beyond our individual ways of like problem solving and creativity. But my, like what you and Steven just described is like getting into kind of a flow state. Mm -hmm. Right. I have a hard time getting out of it. It's mm -hmm. like, I'm always there, which is why if you're like, remember to bring up printer paper and I'm <laughs> like, okay, like I just say those words. I didn't actually hear you or process right. that. And for, even if I replied to a text, yep. it doesn't actually get through my, weird ideas yeah. like whatever I happen <laughs> to be thinking about that morning. It's like the flow state is always there and I need to turn it off to like do something like work out a brand deal or something not creative yeah. that like requires my full attention, like messaging people for the next sweatshirts, you right. know, that kind of thing. It's like, I need to turn it off, which is really hard for me. Huh. It's That's like the opposite. It's like in most creative things I've seen, people talk about it, their thoughts. It's like, oh yeah, like I was on this hike and I thought of this book idea and then I like sat down and wrote the book and like trying to achieve this flow state, you know, if it's uh, dopamine detox. Like these are things like <laughs> the general community is talking about like, oh yeah, I stopped using my phone and like I stopped watching Netflix and I'm getting all these creative ideas. I was like, I got to slow the creative ideas down so I can achieve <laughs> something, yeah. you know? Like every time I talk to uh, my friend Stetson, we like a lot of the same kind of music. And so I'm like, oh yeah, man, like I want to make this, uh, something I've been really wanting to do is take discography of rap artists and de build a DJ set of them telling their life story in chronological order. So mm. like Nas would be the first one. He has a lot of songs about growing up in New York. And then he has a lot of songs about like people changing around him as he started to be successful and make money. Like things happen in his life, friends die, that kind yep. of thing, you know? So I want to take all the lyrics from all of his songs and like mash it into a montage. Oh, but that's the order. Because they're yeah. never in order. In uh -huh, the, yeah. Exactly. Because you know, you you get different inspirations throughout mm -hmm. life. So it'll like the change of styles too. And like the way, even the technology they had to make beats when he started versus now right. is insane. So like to put that all in chronological order would be like be cool. the coolest thing ever. <laughs> the Eminem one would probably take an eternity. Oh, it would be a <laughs> long, it has so long many journey. Cause I want to cut in interviews and I want to get like a, a VJ, they call it like a visual DJ setup mm. as well. So I can mix in interviews over instrumental tracks and like, it's cool. going to take so long and I might never do it. And I spend so much of my free time just thinking about how the end product will look mm -hmm. and it drives me crazy. I can't stop. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like why, like a lot of the things I've done, I've done is because like the only way to stop it is to make it and then yep. you move on to the next thing. But this idea is dangerous because one, records are expensive. I'm, buying, <laughs> yeah. I'm buying all these Nas records and then I want to do Tyler the Creator next, which is going to be a lot easier because most of his songs aren't about real things anyways. So why do you need the actual records for this idea? Yeah, Because of the way it'll look in the end product. Because it's going to be a video of 
oh, the mix. Oh, 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 I see. So, yeah, I missed that part yeah. in the description. Yeah, that makes so sense. So sorting through the records and then uh, the vi- the visual DJ setup, will, like, I plug my iPad into it basically, but on screen it'll show the screen. And you'll see the actual records yeah, being Yeah, it'll yeah, kind yeah. of okay. look like a live beat making live stream. Right, it's, right. Okay. It's a common thing on I Twitch. You I thought it was just an audio thing. That's why I didn't. That's why yeah. I was asking because I was. It's like like Timbaland does this. Like he just live streams making beats on Twitch, and he has multiple cameras. So you see, like if he's drumming, you see his MPC. Yep. If he's sampling, he has a camera. You can see him going through records. Right. So it'd be kind of like that, but it would all be kind of like, I'd know exactly what to do and when to do it, and there'd be a lot of like breaks. Like it wouldn't be something you could perform live. This right. sounds like a huge project. It's a huge project, <laughs> man. And like I just. I can't, like, if there's a way for, you know, like, watch time on your phone, you can be like, oh, I spent two hours on Instagram today. Yeah. If I had that about this one idea, <laughs> I just don't know how many hours it would be. But a I lot, just, probably. I can't, <laughs> I can't turn it off. And I think I drive my wife crazy sometimes because <laughs> she loves my ideas. But uh, also, I don't like talking about, like, real life things when I'm in that headspace, <clears throat> which is like all of my free time. Right. So she's like, oh, like we need to do this thing by Wednesday. Should we do it today? And I'm like, no, I'm thinking. <laughs> 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 you yeah. know? And it like drives her crazy. She's like, all right, but eventually at some point we're going to need to talk about this because it's like a real life thing we need <laughs> to do now. Like I'm sure you'll do this someday and that's great. But it's like, that's funny. I don't know. The, What's weird is, is even if I know I will probably never do the idea, I still can't turn it off. But mm. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have a similar, I mean, not quite the same thing, but like with just, you know, building things, like it's always just yeah, can't, can't turn it off. Like also annoying my wife with <laughs> <laughs> just like, cause what, I also am like very obsessive about things too, with certain things. Like when I, when I get this idea, like like the Humvee idea, for I example. I was just about you know, to say like, I just can't. Yeah, we've all heard about it. We've heard the Humvee Everybody's heard about it, like, yeah. so many times. Like, you, Stephen told us, like, the day before, because we knew the auctions were on Wednesday, Stephen said something like, this is going to be Ethan's best day ever, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. And I was like, this is going to be, like, yeah. like, Ethan's probably more excited this morning than he will be, like, when you do your wedding party. <laughs> you <know? laughs> I'm like, this is, like, this is, like, Ethan's moment. He's yeah. buying the Humvees that will become what's in his head for all these years. Yeah. I think it'll be more exciting when we actually get there. Like, the, the, the day of... It's so disconnected when you buy them online. Yeah, you just like yeah. push buttons. It's, it's like, like you want. It was exciting, but it's like, is it real? No. I don't even know. It's like I when you order something in the mail, and but like that's you can't it get excited yeah. until it shows up. Yeah, I was gonna ask you about that. Like, do you think you're gonna be like peak excited when you actually see them in real life, or do you think your excitement is more logical and will stay at that <laughs> level? Oh no, my excitement is very. It, deep. it fluctuates all the time. Like mm-hmm. just like I don't know, probably anybody else. Like you know, it's up and down and like. But it was very hard to focus on doing anything else the day that we got those because it was like in the morning we're bidding on Humvees and then I had to like couldn't do anything about it. Like Edwin, you were saying like that, uh, like when you have an idea and you can't, you don't have time to do it or whatever. That's why I'm always talking about the Humvees because I've had this idea and I haven't been able to do anything about it for years. Mm -hmm. Like I see all these ideas of how to make it cool and, you know, fast and whatever. Yeah. And I like usually I don't have to wait that long to like start working on the actual idea. So like, (laughs) but I think Humvees too, you, it's one of those things. It's like, okay, you got a pretty good idea in your head of how cool a Lamborghini is. And then you see it and you're like, nice. That's about as cool as I thought (laughs) Humvees. It's like, oh yeah, that's pretty cool. But then you see one driving on the street. It's kind of a rare occurrence surprisingly for North Idaho, but you'll see one like, every yeah. other month or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You see one driving on the street with like a citizen driving and you're like, no, you look sweet, man. Yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, like, pretty yeah. cool. <laughs> yeah. It's at least that's the way it is for me. Like I always have a idea in my head of how cool they are, but then you see one on the street around normal cars and you're like, that is nice. <laughs> <laughs> they just hit different as you yeah. might say. It's like whenever I see a Grom, I'm just like, nice. There's so much. Don't smaller. get this man on the Grom <laughs> topic. <laughs> it's crazy. If you got your R1 for five grand, I was thinking about that. Mm-hmm. A Grom is four grand. Yeah. Uh, R1 <laughs> could go 200 miles an hour almost. Like, I know that that's a really good You know what really else is four idea. grand? A Humvee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah. it's a nice staggering uh, I just staircase. I can't believe how 
much used Groms hold their value. It's ridiculous, honestly. I don't yeah. understand how anyone's paying. Is that. it a supply and demand issue? Because uh, I think I you no. just buy a new Grom right now, right? Well, okay, it is a supply and demand issue. They aren't like they're not making that many. They of them. make them and people buy them so quickly that you have to buy them used, and then people can ask whatever they want. Yeah, that's so a yes, it's demand, a supply yeah. and demand issue. Oh, yeah. 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 Just like new trucks were, and a it's while. a Honda Grom. Like it's, still it's not like you're gonna have a hundred thousand miles on this thing. It's like someone drove that's it true. a they thousand miles. Yeah, that's it's true like, too. It is new. Yeah. yeah, unless they crashed it. But yeah, is that my tracks I hear? No, the let's just kind of freaking uh, out about something. We have else, a but very nice package coming today. I've been waiting for it for the hardcore fans on the channel. You'll remember the yellow Camaro. We bought these track and ski package from Alibaba. And that was lasted. the first thing we ever bought from Alibaba and we had no idea if it was going to show up. Yeah. We were just like, do we ever get yeah. this? I don't know. <laughs> we just used a credit card that we knew had some kind of protection. We're like, does this even work in China? <laughs> like who knows? And then we got it and it lasted about how many minutes until you hit the snow berm? <laughs> Oh, I don't know. It wasn't that long. Oh, was, no. It was probably five minutes, and it came with the cheapest, wonkiest little skis. And they it were just pretty went, dinky. He, I wouldn't even say you crashed into the berm. You touched it. Just, it. I just, yeah, well, I, <laughs> I, hit, I hit the berm a little bit, and then it spun yeah. me around into it, and it then that just broke the ski in half. Completely broke. So we never really, like, we never took it on, like, a groomed snowmobile trail or anything. Because it was terrible in deep snow. It was yeah. just too small and heavy, and the tracks are very yeah. small. But It looked very cool. It looked really yeah. good. That was one of our best videos at the yeah. time. It was one of our best videos yeah. we'd ever done. It looked very cool. Yep. And these are cool-looking things. So now we got better quality skis, still some cheap Chinese situation, but way better quality and we're putting it on the 28,000 watt go-kart and another go-kart that I'm not sure if the video will be out yet, but. And or another thing that it, we don't even have yet. Yeah. Lots oh, of things. Yes. We're There's waiting on like a things. small small, bunch things of projects. With small tracks. Yes. Yeah. And we even got a small turbo kit in the mail. Mm, small yes. little tank of something. Yeah, that one definitely isn't out yet, but you guys are going to be pretty impressed with the amount of boom, boom juice we're putting into one engine. We'll put it mm -hmm. that way. Yep. It's going to be pretty amazing. Will the amazing. results be impressive? Who knows? Time will tell. Probably was, not. Probably actually. not. The results, <laughs> the explosion <laughs> might be impressive. Yeah. What are the odds of us boosting and nosing an engine? 125cc four-stroke engine, I should say, that we actually get a piece of the engine to come out of the head. Is that Out even, of the head? No. Probably not. Never going to happen. It'd be out the or? side, yeah. The, the but head do you is think it's so, possible? Yeah, you could throw a rod through the block easily. Really? Um, for sure. But the thing I've is, never seen anyone do it on an the, engine the, the, that small. You'd actually have to make boost first. And I think that's going to be the hard part is to actually make it, make it functionally boost. boost. We'll the, figure the, it nitrous, out. the nitrous, the nitrous, you, can just, yeah, you just go till it blows yeah. and it'll mm -hmm. absolutely. What if we pressured the turbo with like a really powerful leaf blower instead of exhaust? Would that be more on nope. an engine that small? Not even close. Really? You'd, you'd need like 30 leaf blowers. Really? Yeah. Leaf blowers are really good at volume, but they're not good at pressure. Mm. And that's why, like, that's why force induction is hard because oh. you need a lot of volume and pressure. <gasps> you know what we should do, Will? What? We should get a bigger engine running next to the small engine that's huh? boosting the turbo. <laughs> <laughs> Would that work? How about, I mean, yes. <laughs> that's hilarious. But then you have a bigger engine that could just make more power yeah. and you'd have to yeah. have it there the whole time. But the idea is to get a rod go through a small engine. I've never seen it. Uh, it I'm I sure mean, it's happened. But these are like essentially possible. weed just whacker not, engines, yeah. right? That are uh, on these little machines. Well, they're not, not really weed no whacker engines. Those are pretty small. Yeah, but. Weed, weed whacker engines are like 50 cc's. Like, oh, okay. They're just a, they're just a clone of like yeah. basically like a, a yeah. Honda 110 engine. Yeah. They're just a Chinese okay. clone of that. Basically. This is the same size as the the fake Grom, right? 125 four yeah. stroke. Yeah, yeah, and, and it's all that horizontal yeah. cylinder. It's probably layout, the like, same yeah. engine. It's actually probably the exact that same thing yeah. on the rev limiter is like, ba ba ba. Like it sounds so weak. I can't imagine boosting it enough for a piece of the engine to come out of itself. And, and it just depends on how strong the relative materials are, you oh. know, like will yep. the rod come out or will it just think about how hard we blew up the 450 engine in, in the Barbie Jeep. That we, was that, very The piston intense. turned sideways in the cylinder and then yeah. hammered itself into the yeah. head and not a single piece came out of the engine. That's crazy. Yeah. Like, See, that's what that's, I mean. It's, you never know. Yeah. But you could also just be like driving down the 
road one day in your Subaru, and then there's a window. Oh, no. You know? <laughs> oh, no. That has happened to me. <laughs> <Don't> <laughs> move on. I know. <laughs> yeah. But, like, with, with hardly any boost at all, you're just cruising along. And that happened on an point. NA car for me. Yeah. 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 Well, the first test drive of the shopping cart, the first day you had it running. Yeah. There you Shot go. Was like, you and you weren't even rev banging no, at all. No, well, I just maybe sat for a couple years. Yeah. So. 3,000 RPMs. I think were... I still find pieces of that inside <laughs> yeah. of that engine. On... Complete and total destruction. Yep. yep. But that so thing it just still depends. Ran. You might yeah. see a rod come through the engine or you might yeah. just have mashed potatoes inside. I kind of have a feeling it's just going to be like, <laughs> and then just stop. It also like, might just, nothing. it might not be a catastrophic violent failure. It just could like just a like hole melt in the piston, piston down yeah. or like just very boringly stop functioning. Mm. Yep. <laughs> That's kind of the... That's why we need to really give it the beans right away. We can't yeah. just like give it a little beans. We got to give it all the beans. Yeah, like max boost yeah. with the NOS. All just... the NOS in there. And yeah. then go, gee, and then I'll just blow. Yeah. That's why I didn't really realize... Well, I didn't realize at all how NOS worked. Mm. I... Because, you know, you just see the Fast and Furious turn yep, the bottle, the hit the button, <laughs> goosh. Launch. And their floor uh, pan falls out just from the <laughs> sheer force. I didn't realize that NOS helped the air side of the combustion, not the fuel side mm -hmm. of the combustion. Yeah, it's not fuel, it's oxygen. I thought it was the fuel side. Yeah. Because I just figure it's in a bottle. It's probably kind of a liquid gas. I mean, technically, it is a fuel because oxygen is fuel. Like, it, it it's just a yeah. gaseous fuel, not a liquid fuel. Uh, yeah. But yes, but when right, as I was researching it with the air carb side. carbonated engine, not carbonated, carbureted <laughs> <laughs> engines, I was researching it and I was like, oh yeah, like these little tiny NOS kits they have for like the 212 kits that are just like a CO2 cylinder kind yeah. of, that is just the air side. Mm -hmm. And these engines are already power limited towards the fuel side. So that's why I got a wet NOS kit for carbureted engines. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> because it also brings in more gas. Ah. And so yeah. that is the part, like, I just had actually no idea. Like, you see them spray, and, it like, you see the spray. It's, like, liquid. But it's, like, so the kit I got is bringing in extra gas, plus the NOS is, like, extra air. Oh, could plus the turbo. Wa-boom! Ethan, <laughs> could we have a purge valve on this thing? Like... Oh, like, I mean, you know, obviously like, you could. I don't think it. Uh, it would uh, look so cool. Just, just I don't know. I, I honestly don't know that much about the, nitrous. What is a purge valve for? It's just to purge the nitrous in the system. But so you no, know how so like race cars like have yeah, it goes like <laughs> yeah. I think it's just to make sure there's no air in the line, so that yeah. when you hit the button, you're getting pure not yeah. NOS and not like exactly. bits of oh, other stuff. I see. So you bring it to the end of the line. You just go purging. It just is, and then yeah. when you hit it, it goes. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Yeah, I we've think that's how it works anyway. Had a surprising lack of turbos in the grind hard legacy so far. And I it mean, it's kind of it's largely sad. because like we we get. I mean, at least me as the person who's been building most of it, I get too attached to the things actually working well. And generally yeah. speaking, unless you have a lot of time and or a lot of money, mm -hmm. generally both turbos do making not. something that wasn't no. meant to be turboed work well and reliably with a turbo just doesn't happen. I think yeah. that's. Uh, a lot of people have really hit the nail right on the head of our current era of mm. grind hard is like Ethan working on something very serious and time consuming. <laughs> and then will and I just shrekking about with like these quick crazy things that are probably going to like be really cool for a couple seconds and then blow up mm -hmm. because the next two things we want to turbo are fully a swindle brothers project like yeah mm. you right. don't want anything to do with them and that's which fine. is which is why you need to build a new <laughs> shop so that you can have a place to store all these projects because they pile up at an alarming rate yeah that is <laughs> they the do get about, done pretty quickly yeah, <laughs> like this new one like we'll basically bust it out in a week and it's like that takes up a lot of room it's a pretty big little thing i mean it takes up as much room i mean as the kernel that's a daily commuter though that that could be steven's daily commuter no oh yeah <laughs> Two seats, man. Two steering wheels. Yep, pretty nice. Two brakes. You guys are gonna love this video. Mm -hmm. And when Will and I picked it up, the craziest thing happened because the Ute has been sitting in the snow for a while, hadn't been mm. used, functioning. So we kind of brought it down. For, for anyone listening who maybe hasn't followed along for that long, uh huh. The Ute, yes, is a '96, '95 BMW. Yeah. 
um, uh, 323. Yeah. Coop. Uh, coop. That's the word I was looking for. BMW coop that we chopped the back off of and turned it into a pickup truck. Yeah. Many years ago. Anyway, mm-hmm. just in case anybody didn't have that image in their head yeah. before this story continues. And Will drives like a normal car that you can't fit a project in. Mm-hmm. And then drives the Tesla Civic. doesn't have the range to pick up things. So, you know, we had Ethan's only the Ute. out and about with his truck. There's no way to get projects. So we brought in the Ute, threw in a new battery. We went to Harbor Freight, bought all the tools we'd need to replace an axle because every single time we've driven that thing, we've had to replace an axle. And we're like, if this happens far away and Ethan's not here with the truck, <laughs> we're so screwed. So we bought all the tools and we just go off trundling into the freezing cold snow. It has no heater. So we had to have the windows down to like <laughs> defrost. Well, I told you we had to have the windows yeah, down and then the it turns there. out we did not have to have them down. We were freezing cold wearing gloves. Like we had so many layers. We're just freezing, <laughs> shivering, driving this car and it's so loud and it doesn't have sway bars and the everything is falling apart. And there's no, we think that there's no bushings in the rear subframe. Every time you shift or go around a corner, the entire diff sounds like it's about to bang out of the subframe. Honestly, Will probably just forgot the bolts again. Like that's what I told him, and he said, "No, the bolts are there." And I was like, are. "We'll see." No, we remember. I looked under there, and the bolts were in the tra- the two ones that you'll doink like that. There's they're more, in there. There's a lot of other bolts in there. They're in there. The first I time Will you're... replaced, that. I did the <laughs> first time. But that sounds like the... that's like wop 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 like really hard That's this one this sounds like this man. one's only on shift it feels like the drive shaft itself is like hitting something like i mean it could be there's no. yeah. Any, yeah who knows so it's know. an adventure and a it's half an adventure going to pick up this machine like every foot is a struggle <laughs> but we got pretty confident on the way over no. we were like yeah it's not gonna break it'll be fine yeah so and yeah. it was and it, it was did the trick we got it we drifted around this guy's neighborhood and before we paid him, he seemed a little uncomfortable about the situation. I was like, oh, can we drive it around? And he was like, yeah. And then Will just takes off. Like, we go many blocks away from this man's house. We're drifting in intersections. And Will gets to this, like, adrenaline, like, kind of Adrenaline fog. He just doesn't <laughs> think. <laughs> This is true. I, I don't know what it is. Like, it's like the second you give this man, this is like a what six horsepower situation. Mm-hmm. We're sitting in there. He's driving me around. And I'm passenger because I was filming, and he's just yoinking around, drifting, like not paying attention. There's like traffic, and he's like, "Oh yeah, like drift into this intersection right through a stop sign," and like it could drift because it was it could drift. No. It was not a live road. We were in a neighborhood. Yeah, Let me but just still, he read. almost ran into two trucks. That- there was two trucks, but I had it fully <laughs> under control. I saw them, and uh-huh. I knew exactly where they were. Uh- that thing's a nice precision drifter machine. <laughs> but that's like. I don't know. I think you get so involved with just having as much fun as possible Mm -hmm. in the moment, which is great. It's like when children play, I think we're both the same way. (laughs) Like logic (laughs) out the window. But your risk tolerance goes to like zero. Or or 12. I mean, risk tolerance would be very high. It's like you forget the instant you get behind a wheel, you forget that risk exists. That yes. does explain many True. of Will's behaviors. Yep. <laughs> we need to get a sign, a, a children at play sign for you guys. <gasps> oh. We should put on the chain. Oh, way. <laughs> Wait, actually, that wouldn't be a bad idea for merch either. A picture of the Chang Lee with like that just says children, children at, at play, play. Yeah. <laughs> or a picture of like your two faces. Yeah, that would be awesome. on the children at play. You know, it's like yeah. two children running and then it's just our faces. Photoshop. Or, yeah. Like, wait, yeah, like that sign, the little triangular yeah. sign. Yeah. But actually for like a larger audience, that, that, that's yeah. not a bad idea for merch though. Like it just says like, Caution children at play, but it's like a picture of like a full grown adult on a dirt bike or something. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, like, doing that would be, yeah, doing a wheelie, yeah. a dirt bike, yeah. doing a wheelie. Caution children at play. Wow. I'm going to, we're coming gonna, up with ideas. I'm going to send that one to the graphics designers right after this podcast. <laughs> so the funny thing about you guys picking up that go kart too is I was like, hey, could I get a ride up to Grindard tomorrow? I got to drop my car off for an alignment. Uh huh. And you picked me up in the Ute with that go kart. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the guys at the tire store were like, 
oh, uh, you getting a ride, whatever. I'm like, oh, yeah, he's almost here. And then you pull in and everyone in the store was like, yeah, <laughs> like what the devil is that? <laughs> and the turbo needs to be cleared out every once in a while, you especially if you're it. driving slow and that doesn't really have a horn. So when I pulled into the parking lot, I was like, <laughs> like really letting the boost rip because I had to clear her throat. There was down. a little black smoke. Uh, <laughs> My favorite feature, though, was the puddle of water in the seat. And I just sat right down like, yeah, oh, no. That cab is not sealed at all. <laughs> it was so cold. Yep. Yep. Yeah, that thing's not exactly quiet or... Um, clean yeah, the, the turbo is, is like half clean. an inch above the oil pan so like the turbo drained to the oil pan yeah also. like if you let it sit after it's been running and the oil kind of goes in there and you let it sit for a while it yeah kicks the first out startup so, is always like it's just a cloud of smoke because the turbo yeah. the oil just pools in the turbo yeah. Yeah. when you're running and driving it drains okay yeah. there's like yeah. enough flow to keep it going yeah. <laughs> and just the exit <laughs> and turbo is on the passenger side yep so if you're drifting counterclockwise the oil just like comes out of the exhaust like a diesel it's just like <laughs> <laughs> it's it also crazy. has no muffler and yeah. the exhaust pipe is about two feet long yeah so. mm -hmm. well it does yeah. have a muffler turbos mm -hmm. are mufflers we took it to the car wash before we went and we we're like oh yes let's scrub off all the turbo smudge because it's a white car yep well, the and turbo smudge is the best part. I, well, we wanted to see how much we how could much accumulate, much we accumulate could driving accumulate. to pick it up. Yeah. So we were we had the brush. We did the pressurized soap, like full strength, not going anywhere. That door is going to be a black. thousand miles of gambler <laughs> turbo smoke. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yep. That's the most reliable turboed vehicle. It is actually the only thing we've ever turboed that yeah. hasn't blown up. How much was that eBay turbo kit? It was like the cheapest one. It was like 600 bucks. I want to say the turbo kit was, yeah, 700 bucks. But yeah. then we did buy some other stuff too. We bought like um, the, uh, well, the tuned ECU and injectors and stuff was like 1200 bucks, I think, yeah. so that it could actually, oh, and that's why it actually works yeah. because we didn't try to tune it. We just bought, it's a stock ECU, but it's a company that tunes it. So you just yeah. send them like what your specs are or whatever. And then they send yeah. you an ECU and, and injectors. So like that, that combo was like, but still, I mean, that's $2,000 for a functional turbo kit is still yeah. quite yeah. cheap. That's the problem with the kind of things that Will and I want to turbo these small carbureted engines that come on these like swindly toys. They're so hard. Like, yeah. and then well, if you switch it, cause I even found this, um, carburetor swapped fuel injector kit thing mm. and then because i was looking i'm like all right so 250 cc's single cylinder or less what is on youtube yeah and the only thing i could find where the turbo like properly spooled and like could have made boost was our mustang video which only did that once yeah <laughs> it didn't work again but there's yeah. these huge series of like i found this one these guys with this go-kart it really looked like they were gonna do it they did like all the modifications to like a predator 212 and they did the fuel injected swap for the carburetor and they had a tuner with a computer and it, huh? they still couldn't get it to make boost. Well, they got it to kind of spool, but not like we did. And yeah. it's like, it's so hard with these small engines. I mean, a large part of it is just there's not turbos made that are small enough. And even the small yeah. one, a single cylinder engine doesn't work well for turboing. It's possible. And they do make them work. Like there are snow bikes that are turboed. But yeah, um, a big part of the issue is just that the, the like, with only one cylinder, the exhaust pulses are pretty far apart, relatively speaking. Yeah. And it's a tiny engine. So it's like, that's not even, it's just, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, from what I understand, one of the big secrets to that is just a large plenum, which is what, uh, it's just a uh, big chamber. volume of air chamber somewhere in the intake tract because oh, then it so can build boost not, and store it. Because the yeah. other thing is like the amount of boost that it's building versus what it uses. It's like using it as fast as it's, I, th I think anyway, this is all very loose understanding of it, but like mm. Mm. because you only have the one cylinder, there's not another cylinder firing when that cylinder is uh, right. pulling the air yeah. in. So it's pulsating so, the whole time. Yeah. It's just like pulsing high and low pressure back and forth and it's not actually building boost. So like one of the ways I've heard to make it work is to build a box around your carburetor that is mm -hmm. also a plenum. So the whole carburetor is inside of a pressurized box oh. and that way you get around some of the difficulties of like, 
uh, tuning a carburetor work with boost because oh. then the entire carburetor just doesn't know. No, I mean they're not smart, but and then we it doesn't know the that it's into there too. Uh, yeah, probably. Well, All I it. think you'd probably want the NOS to be after that because yeah, yeah, because then you otherwise it'd be kind of uncontrolled. But anyway, the that's one of the ways that I've heard. Mm-hmm. I've never tried to do it or seen one in person, but that's one of the ways I've heard that you can get it to work is just build a big box, an airtight box around your carburetor so that all of the, it's equal pressure inside and outside of the carburetor are not equal. Is that how like relative. the pro snow bike? I honestly don't know. Well, those are all fuel injected too. So, oh yeah, um, I don't know. And then they, they probably have an intercooler which would act as a plenum. So that's, I assume. Oh. I've never seen one in person, so I don't really know exactly how they're set so up. So while you're talking about this, variability with a single cylinder yeah what if we took the twenty eight thousand watt motor into like a fan type situation that was making pressure yeah that's called an electric supercharger you can 100 percent do that audi does it from the factory really in some of their cars yeah so i thought that was a myth oh uh, so, well yes the ones you buy on ebay are a myth because they're well, like 20 yeah bucks they're, and they're, and they're <laughs> tiny. just a fan but you do actually need that kind of power to yeah, spin to that's spin how out. much power that's how like I was talking about, I don't think I think this was before that we were podcasting, but how, like, or no, that this was just earlier. Oh, there you go, my memory. Anyway, <laughs> um, getting pressure and volume at the same time, it takes. I mean, like big superchargers on like drag racing cars take like 500 horsepower to run the supercharger, on like a huh? top fuel dragster, like that, or I don't know if it's 500, but hundreds yeah. of horsepower. Yeah. So yes, you can 100% make an electric supercharger. You just take a belt drive supercharger, hook it up to a strong electric motor, but it does actually have to be one like in that the size. Yeah. M- Could many we do kilowatts. it with our little turbo? So it's like a pro charger. Is that what it's called? Um, it's like a turbo No, because you don't have a way to drive it. You need a Next. mechanical way to drive the oh. super, the, a turbo is inherently driven by exhaust yeah. gas. So what I was thinking is, you know how a uh, like leaf blower is essentially like a turbo on the end of a stick. It like yes. sucks, and then the fan makes the air more pressurized. So what if you essentially have... It doesn't actually pressurize. It just makes it go faster. Okay. But, but what yeah. if you did like a similar concept into the exhaust port side of the turbo, so you're pushing... It, it, the same thing applies. You're just not going to get enough. So much more power. Even, to... even with that strong of a motor, the 28,000 watt motor? Well, but the motor would need to be spinning a fan that's capable of that. And at which point it would just be a turbo. Like it would be oh. pointless to put a turbo <laughs> to spool yeah. a turbo. Yeah. Rather than just putting that just turbo putting in the engine, right? Yeah. Like from the, if fan. it's got it enough volume the... to spin up the turbo, then just use it as a turbo. And these and kind of motors we're talking about don't have the RPMs where a supercharger, like 8,000 RPMs would be enough to, uh, well, a supercharger, you could, it, supercharger would totally work. Cause you can, the thing about mm. superchargers is they're, you can change the gear ratios. Maybe that's what we got to do. Super we have a little baby supercharger over there that baby we did on the barbecue. Charge. Yeah. It's just a matter of getting it to spin at the right spin RPM. It. And I mean, that thing made at certain points of when it was running, it was making like 15 PSI boost. But was the fully... engine running better because of it? Absolutely not. Oh. But it did actually build the boost. And that's so. Hmm. Yeah, um, interesting. Th- I think the thing with that one, well, the Barbie Jeep, is that we weren't gaining more horsepower than we were using mm-hmm. to spin the supercharger. Were we gaining power? Probably. Yeah. But we we're also using all of that because the carburetor situation wasn't taking advantage of it. I think the things that we want to do and other people want to do, there's a reason why you can't find a video of anybody successfully doing it. I think we're running into physics problems. Absolutely. Yeah. But, I mean, cause I'd love to, I've been thinking about this a lot and I've been watching a lot of like tuning videos and Rob Dom. Like I think the way my brain works, I could get good at it. I don't think it's like that hard for like the kind of things we do tuning. Like I think like a Rob Dom four rotor situation is insane. Yeah. But like for what we do, like if we wanted the turbo this, like I feel like the actual computer side of it isn't rocket science. No, it's, I like, mean, I'd like yeah, to the, learn. And it. the software is pretty good. I, yeah. you know, you, you just have to learn <clears throat> stuff about, yeah. you know, air fuel ratios and that kind of stuff. Yeah. It's not. And you just, and uh, some of it, I mean, within safe regions, but it seems like, like the drag racing videos, you do a poll you change the settings, you do a poll, and then you look at the data and you compare it. You're like, okay, this worked here. This didn't work here. If we change the timing and then let's try again. It seems like it's like a, on that high of a level, it's like a trial and error process. Yeah, because I mean, you kind of know what's like, there's some science behind it already, but like if you're pushing the limits, then 
there isn't going to be information. So you just have to try it, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and with small motors, I mean, worst case scenario, you blow it up and then you buy a new one for a couple hundred bucks. It's like not a big deal. Well, for this thing you're talking about, you now have two spare engines because that double yeah. go-kart thing came with two engines. Those engines. And those basically. are the, basically the same engine that's going to be in every oh, Chinese yeah, thing. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. I want to buy all the Chinese things. I went, I found <laughs> the site of the people who make the double go-kart. And I, uh, as I found cool things, I sent it to Will and our conversation was like this huge list. And I was like, oh shoot. And then I just sent him the website. I was like, I realized that I sent you one of each thing from this on, site. From that manufacturer yeah, that manufacturer. <laughs> they Every, sell a lot of weird machines. They have fake mini Vespas. What? Huh? So mm. sick. <laughs> They're like little, the same exact engine as in all the other stuff. Like, could you imagine a little Vespa, like all cute, and then we get like two turbos sticking out the front? We'd need a big, uh, two turbos. I mean, you could have two turbos that would just look cool, but yeah. you couldn't have two turbos that would work. No. Yeah. Two turbos on a single cylinder engine. Oh, <laughs> man. I do actually wonder about the scale of that, though. Like, I think I was thinking about it as you were talking about like running into physics. Uh -huh. And I think what we're running into is physics with the turbo sizes that we have because yeah, think yeah. about an RC car, like a nitro RC car. Those mm -hmm. little engines are like smaller than a soda can and they, and make, they make ridiculous yeah. power. And like there is a scale of things where like, like a giant boat engine weighs, you know, hundreds of thousands of tons and it does make an obscene amount of power, but like power to weight ratios, the bigger you get, the worse it gets. Just that's physics. Yeah. Elephant versus ant. So the elephant goes yoink. Uh, yeah, but oh. the elephant goes around hills because it's too much energy to climb a hill. An ant can like carry 10 times its own yeah, body just weight. Just straight up a tree. Right? So power to weight ratio. <laughs> yeah. So I, caught, I, I was wondering like if you had a small enough turbo that you could get, you could theoretically make way more power to, power to displacement or power to weight with a tiny engine you know, for its scale than a bigger engine. Is there any way we could make one? Like, would metal 3D printing hold up to the flow or heat? Uh, I have no idea on, on that, but... Or, like, could um, we, like, get pieces from something like Zometry detailed enough where we just get the plans for a turbo and scale it down? I don't think it'd be worth it. Also, I do... There's also the fact of, like, the single-cylinder thing, and I don't know enough about forced induction oh. science to know how much that's I've read about it and I know that it's a problem, but I also don't know yeah. how much of that is yeah. accurate and how much of a problem that is. Cause like if you had say 125 CC V six, that would probably work much better with yeah. a turbo than 125 CC yeah. single cylinder, you know? Yeah. So maybe knows? that's what we need to do. We just need to find a two cylindered engine that is accessible, that fits where these small Chinese engines go. I think people have had success with the like larger Predators, the 670. That's a V-twin. Really? I think. I don't know no. if the 670 is, but they make a V-twin Predator engine. When I it's, hear it's pretty Predator big. engine, I'm just like, oh no. I, I, I mean, I don't know, but I know people have turbo and supercharged those. Oh, wow, that's cool. And I don't know how successful they were with it, but I know that they've done it. Yeah. I just um, want to send a rod to the moon and like a $500 Amazon toy. Well, that bottle of nitrous that <laughs> you have over trick. there will yeah. do the trick. That will really do the trick. You just, just go to nitrous instead of turbos. Yeah, I mean, nitrous is well, just as exciting. Well, that's why we're doing easier. Devil. That's why we're doing both. Because in all my research, I'm like, this is not working. And then I've never seen anyone put a real NOS kit on that small of an engine. Yep. So we're going to be pushing the boundaries of what's <laughs> possible, spending uh -huh. more on the NOS kit than the entire go-kart. But Wait, how, how much did the NOS How kit much did cost? the little NOS kit cost? Um, that one? They were all around like $600. Uh, I think okay. that one was a little and about the It's same not price that bad because we could put that on like any project. Yeah. Yeah. But the project we're putting it on was $600. Oh. Right. So <laughs> that's really cheap. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, with stripping a little bit wow. more. Like but 800 600 or something. bucks. Like... That's the dream. Like little tiny things you can do wheelies on. Mm -hmm. Edwin Man. does love his tiny he machines does. and wheelies. <laughs> it's a deep yeah. obsession that I don't think anyone will ever quite understand. Yeah. No one will it's quite understand. Children at play. Exactly. Children at play. Yeah. Actually, the, the picture of the wheelie thing needs to be 
not just a dirt bike. It needs to be a little dirt bike on a ti- like so it's like, obvious that it's a like full grown adult on a child's dirt toy. Bike is <laughs> yeah. small. We'll just take a picture of you wheeling your yeah. little green razor bike, uh-huh. turn it into like a shadow. Make that just yeah. like a. Maybe we should take a still from the video when you were doing all the wheelies with Cindy. Just Ethan wheeling the Barbie Jeep. Children at play. Children at play. That would be a good one too. Actually, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, this is an idea that we could build on. Yep. We could do the yeah. dirt bike one and then do the Barbie yep. Jeep one. And huh, I like that. You know what we didn't do. On the last podcast, wise words with wise Will. Wise words with Will. What do you got for us? Hmm. You're putting me on the spot here. That's why wise words with Will works so well. Um, this is I don't know with too many W's. <laughs> wise words with Will works so well. Yeah. Oh, no. oh, that's the four W's they were looking for last time. Are the three W's or someone well, said, we it said was wise words with oh, Will is already four. four W's. And we Dang kept it. saying we, it was like W, W, W. w, w. Yeah. And then well, like, I mean, conjunctions are often left out of abbreviations. Yeah, so, so you could drop the W. That's for a smart will. way of saying what we were trying wise to say. Wise words <laughs> with Will. What was the extra W's I just said? Works well. Yeah, works well. Six. With Six Will. Wise words. Um, wise words of Will. I think if you want to go do something, you should do it right now. You shouldn't wait for your life to like get to a certain point or something. If you want to go do something that you think you need to wait for the future to do, I think you should just go do it. And I think that thing should be sleep. Buy an R1. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was just going to say your wise words, words with Will seemed a little mm-hmm. lackluster today. So yeah. Yeah, you um, should take your, and, and then yeah. go take a nap. Yeah, I think I'm at like 31 hours now. Yeah. I talk about this a lot because you I'm know, damaged. I didn't idea generating machines. And like, it's always best if you do it when you're excited about it, especially with That's like true. Will and I, because you could like maintain your ideas over a long period of time. Mm-hmm. Will and I is like, if Will's excited about something, it's like, let's go. Yeah. And so, and I'm the same way. And then I like move on to the next thing. No, so. but this actually, it might be a little lackluster, but it's actually like I, a I real. I was just being silly. It's actually like <laughs> a real thing I have been um, thinking about a lot is like a lot of people in like my age group and stuff have been like holding off on doing things that they want to do. Like uh-huh. just going and like, doing fun things because mm-hmm. um, they're like secure in their life or whatever. But I think you just need to go out there and live a little bit more. So that's a real wise word. With yeah. All right. <laughs> no, I, I kind of agree. Yeah. And, and uh, it's why I kind of hate the bucket list thing. Yeah. That's a, it's kind of it's, along the same lines. Like, I mean, like, it's not a terrible thing. I'm not making fun of people who have a bucket. No, list, not at all. But like, it's like an excuse oh, to put it off yeah. into the future. Like, don't yeah. put it off. Do the thing. I mean, there's obvious, obviously balance. You can't yeah. just like completely no. mortgage your future for the present. But no, definitely like, not. <laughs> also, don't mortgage the present for the future. Yeah, like yeah, you know, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yep. Find a balance. Well, but since we missed stuff. last week, I'm really gonna put you on the spot. Two wise words with Will. No. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you kind of had that one in your pocket, it seemed. Uh, yeah, I had that one in my pocket. I actually thought about it on the way here last night because I was like, I'm going to be tired and we have to make a podcast. Yep. Um, dang. Wise words with Edwin is make sure you sleep before podcasting. Yeah, that's I wasn't. What I, that's what I was getting at. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to get stuck on the road so late, but... Um, um, I got you with a second one. Mm. The people are deprived of wise words. They are. They haven't had a lot, you know. Um, I don't know if I have any more for you, (laughs) honestly. (laughs) Let's do wise Uh, words with Steven. Yeah, what's a wise Wise words with Steven? Yeah, Yeah. let's get it. Always go pee before you start the podcast. (laughs) (laughs) That's a good one. (laughs) This is the Sent and Bent podcast. Thanks for watching. We come out every Monday wherever you have fine podcasts, you know, including Audible. Bam. Nice. Nice. Yep.